Hi, I'm Daniel Fisher, Director of Product Optimization here at Sweetwater Sound. I'm very excited to show you the new Korg Minilog Polyphonic Analog Synthesizer. It's a four voice analog with two analog oscillators per voice, plus a voltage controlled resonant filter, uh, plus a voltage controlled amplifier. Uh, you've got a delay with uh, high pass cutoff and you can also use the high pass on your sound. It's also got a sequencer and an arpeggiator and lots and lots of features you would not expect at a synthesizer at this amazing price point. This is a synthesizer for all musicians and all artists really. This ease of use and the somewhat surprising musicality of it to where every knob that I turn in real time it, it seems like everything I do I'm happy with. This kind of lends itself to not being just for synthesizer majors uh, and, and not even keyboard players. Uh, this is an awesome synth for a bass player who would like to just every once in a while add bass lines from synths you know, to a song um, or a guitar player who all of a sudden wants to just add an arpeggiation in the middle of a song. People who just want to make recordings or just jam out live. This is a great synth and at its price point it's unbelievable. So what I'm going to do is just start with an initialized program and start tweaking the different knobs just to show you how easy it is to program this synth and play with it in real time. Okay, so you have 200 programs. The first 100 are factory presets, but you can overwrite them. And so I'm just going to skip into the hundreds where there are init programs. So right now I just have a single oscillator up and my filter is wide open. And I have a choice of waveforms. I have a sawtooth triangle and a square and I can change the pitch with these octave switches per oscillator and I also can change the pitch up, up or down an octave from the pitch knob and I also have quite a bit more range because I have a five octave switch here So, amazing, amazing range. And then I also have some additional control where I can um, change the shape of these waves into some other complexities. And you can actually see it on the screen, which is really cool. And also notice that as I turn the knob, you can see the values of where I'm going. So it helps you get back to where you were or just kind of learn about synthesis in general. So now I'm going to bring in the second oscillator and really show you what having an analog synthesizer means and, and, and that is when you take two waves and slightly detune them it's just a beautiful thing. So we'll bring in the second oscillator. This is with no effects and not even any filtering or anything. I mean, that's just two oscillators beating against each other. And then on top of having all those shapes, you have these other knobs. One of them's cross mod, which modulates the frequency of one against the other. And you don't really have to understand how it works to use almost anything here. You just turn the knobs and very musical things tend to happen. So you can get some really nice animation. Some other things you can do, uh, you got some pitch envelopes, so you can have the pitch move, which is very cool when you turn on oscillator sync. And then ring modulation lets you ring the two frequencies against each other and you get some indifference frequencies so you get another palette to play with. And 
this knob here, this lever, it uh, can be pitch shift and it can be set from uh, anything from 12 steps up, 12 steps down, or anything in between. Um, it will also do many of the other parameters. So um, it's very flexible controller. It's very cool when you're doing sequences and stuff like that. So now we'll get to the noise. You got white noise here, which is great when you're filtering. Kick in resonance, get some wind. And uh, the filter, as you can see, can uh, have resonance. So here it is, no resonance on a four pole. Here it is with some resonance. And lots of resonance. You also have two pole. Which lets more of the high frequencies through. Your filter can key track either not at all, 50% or 100%. So for example, if I had some noise here, I could uh, put this with that down, do the same. And I also have velocity tracking to your filter cutoff, so. And it's really neat that all of these things are in either a knob or toggle switch form. So you look down, you see what's going on, you see what you've just done. And one of the things I really like about this synth is, as I just sit here and tweak, I'm almost always happy with the, the results. Some synthesizers um, take a lot of finessing to get sounds. They make amazing sounds, but it takes a while to get there. This one, I find that just going through and messing with stuff uh, makes some beautiful sounds. So I'm going to now just start tweaking knobs. Again, I'm gonna start from an init program. And um, I think what I'll do is maybe turn the arpeggiator on. Turn up some uh, delay. Turn up the high pass a little bit so that uh, it doesn't get in the way of the sound. It's basically lowering, uh, getting rid of the low frequencies. And, and as I mentioned before, if you throw this switch, you can put the high pass on the regular sounds, get rid of the low frequencies on your main sound. Very musically useful. And it has uh, these different voice modes. It has eight different voice modes um, that can take those four voices of polyphony and use them in different ways. So I'm back to an init program. And in poly, I get four voices of polyphony. In duo mode, I get two notes of polyphony. Each note has two sets of oscillator pairs, which lets me detune them. from mild detuning to extreme detuning.
in unison, I take all four voices and put them on the same note, and now when I detune, it gets really fat. Take that to lower octaves. Also, the delay time can be modulated in real time which is a bunch of fun. I have the feedback up high. It should be coming back up in just a second. Here it comes. Really usable. Um, so now let's see, try some other things. Uh, there are sequences. In fact, all of the init presets I'm sorry, all of the factory presets have sequences already recorded for them. And not only are you able to sequence notes, you can do these things called motion sequences, which allows you to record up to four separate knobs that you're moving while that sequencer is playing back. Um, and then you can edit those and you can delete them and um, you can also add rests and ties and it's a very, very powerful sequencer. Um, and it'll give you up to 16 notes. You can set what the notes are. You can also set the gate time for each. Um, you can also set the unit of the beat for the sequencer. So a lot of cool things there. Um, there's also a mono mode. Now it turns it into your standard monophonic synthesizer where you have the ability to do faster riffs because you're not, uh, you're not having to worry about uh, overlapping yourself. And in the edit mode, you can actually go in and set what the uh, portamento time is. So I can have uh, shorter ones, or I can go pretty extreme. And all of these choices are storable per preset. Um, they also have a chord mode, and, and in the chord mode, you get to choose with this knob, and this knob right here, depending on what your knob, uh, which uh, mode you're in, this knob changes what that does. So in the chord mode, you pick different chords. So there's perfect fifths, minor, major, sus, Sevenths, major sevenths, really nice set of chords. Um, then you have a delay mode, and here what it does is it, it plays all four of the notes of polyphony in an amount of delay that you can set so that it acts like a echo delay, but it's actually done by playing the same four notes you've just played one after the other. So here, they're very short. Now this knob does the unit of time. And that sounds like echo, but what's really happening is those notes are now playing in uh, quarter notes, for example.
Then um, we have an art mode, which I already showed you. But you have lots of choices from the order you played them in, to two octaves, to going up, to going down, going up and down, all of them at once. Random. And you know, you get that going with the delay. And you can change octaves and add new notes at different octaves. Then you have one, this is a side chain, and basically what it does is as you play new notes, it makes the older notes get a little bit quieter. And you can actually set how much it does that. So first let me get into a polyphonic mode and into a little more sane octave. And you put that on and watch as I add another note. The other note gets a lot quieter. So it helps if you're, you're doing what I just did, we're putting down a drone and then adding another note and you want to have the solo not be drowned out by the drone, it's, it's kind of nice. So um, those are the eight modes there. Um, and uh, so now what I think I'll do is I'll just run through some of the presets and let the sequencers kind of do the work here because they've, they've made nice sequences for each of their presets. So now I'll show you a couple that I made. Um, this is just while I was kind of twiddling around with the knobs and I, and I liked what came out enough that it was worth storing. So here's one I made just kind of based off the delay. So you notice here on this um, lever here that I've put uh, filter instead of pitch. There's another one.
Notice how these sounds have a lot of character. Uh, this one's kind of neat. Uh, I call this one Insanity Pitch Bend. I'm controlling the delay time with this slider here. Beautiful. Um, and I've also got a, a really cool LFO that can do for uh, sawtooth, triangle, and square. Um, it can modulate either the pitch or the shapes or the cutoff of the filter. And simultaneously, it can change the rate of the envelopes as well as uh, the initial rate of the envelopes. So that's uh, pretty neat. All right, so another one we can play with is motion sequence. And basically, I just put 16 steps into the step sequencer and then recorded four passes of my turning four different knobs, and those got recorded as part of the sequence. So you can hear the filters moving a little bit, the pitch is going up and down a little bit, and even as I play additional notes, they get affected by that as well. But I can record more. I can record more of these motion sequences over the old ones simply by pressing record, turning a knob. Another really cool feature is the ability to store eight of your favorite patches on these eight buttons. And you simply hold the shift button and then hold it down and it'll store that there. I've put eight there now, so I hold shift and press and here's the first one. Well, 
Obviously, there are far more things to discover on this synth than I've shown you, but if you have any further questions, please contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. My name is Daniel Fisher. Thank you for listening.